Hi, has the users. It's been a long time. At the last lecture, I talked about the exposure and depth for Hasselblad, and this time I proceed with the practical exposure calculation for long exposure. And just like the last one,、uh, this is just one of the easy ways for beginners. And keep in mind that there could be many other effective ways like spaghetti recipes. And this time, I wanted to show as much samples as I could, and they are prepared at the end of this chapter. Okay, when you're in a spot that you think you're never gonna miss, you mostly measure the light and decide the depth and exposure, don't you? In my case, when the light in the frame viewfinder whatever is kind of plain, the light is plain. I mean, there is no big difference of the light. I mostly use average metering. And in the cases, I have a tendency to take slightly brighter shots, just like some kind of high keys, which has some benefits. But when the light in the frame is dynamic, dramatic, whatever, just like there are two or three stop differences, I make it using spot metering and bracketing. Let's say the brightest part, I mean the highlight, is one one twenty fifth for f sixteen. I multiply the ND stops and apply reciprocity failure for that exposure, and after shooting, I make a backup for the shutter speed of 160. That's why when we confront the dynamic light changes, nobody knows what will happen for sure. Especially just like when the sun rises or sets, the light change will be a lot faster than your expectation. Keep in mind. Uh, when the light composition is dynamic or frequently changing, bracketing is the insurance policy for your time and effort to be there. Okay, let's say you measure the light and decide exposure. Then how long are you supposed to open the aperture with your ND filters? Whether you have ND eight, the three stops which I love to use especially before sunrise or after sunset. Or you have the ND four hundred, the nine stops, which is good for thickly cloudy daytime condition, or the ND one thousand, the ten stops, which many people like to use on sunny daytime. Whatever filters you're keeping in your hand, the calculation is quite simple and easy. At the last lecture, I told you that each gap in a meter means one stop in exposure. You remember. The number following the ND means that exposure reduces as much as the number. Let's say now you're in a location and the aperture you've just set is f16, and let's say the shutter speed of 60 is what you got from the light meter. And okay, let's suppose you're holding an ND 1000 10 stops in your hand, then you make 10 stop moves starting at 60 to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and to the right, seven, eight, nine, and finally ten. Okay, what do you see? It's fifteen seconds, not one fifteenth. It's very easy. You got it. Okay, this time let's say you're in after sunset dusk, which is my favorite time for shooting. Okay, anyways, let's say you got the shutter speed of four seconds for the aperture f eleven this time. In this situation, if you feel like the four seconds are not enough to minimize the landscape, what do you think you need? If you insist the ND one thousand the ten stop this time, you're most likely supposed to stay there overnight. In such cases, the ND eight the three stop is quite helpful. You start at four seconds to the right. Why to the right? That's because it's four seconds, not a quarter second. You know what I mean? Okay, starting at four seconds, one, two, three, is thirty seconds. Very easy, huh? Okay, then, if you actually take a shot with that thirty seconds, what do you think will happen? A good black and white negative with perfect exposure. Never. What you will happen to see is kind of a somewhat transparent negative, and that means the exposure is quite insufficient. Then, what's the problem? You did everything from correct light metering to applying the ND calculation. Then what's the problem? It's the matter of reciprocity failure, which is the last and critical factor you have to consider when shooting long exposure. 
Okay, look at the chart, and this one is made by myself because I mind the copyright stuff. And actually, there are quite many helpful chart images that you can utilize at Google. As you can see here, I most likely use Kodak 100 TMX and Air 4 Delta 100. The left one is for the figures already applied and the calculation, and surely I told you those figures alone are not sufficient for the result. You got 15 seconds, which means if you have a Kodak, it must be 25 seconds, and if you have an Airford, it must be 54 seconds. You got it? Okay, this time I'll give you a special example. Uh, okay, let's suppose it's a daytime and the clouds are moving so slow that you can't notice that they are moving. Uh, you think the shutter speed at least over 2 minutes will be required for expressing the cloud movements and for minimalizing the water. And this time, let's say uh, you have an Ilford. In this kind of a situation, uh, you set the final exposure at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Then the previous and the calculation must be 30 seconds. Do you understand? If you have an ND1000 10 stop, the original shutter speed must be 130 seconds. And if you happen to have an ND400 the 9 stop, the original must be 1 15th, right? Then, using the light meter, find a proper aperture for the shutter speed you've got. Okay, today's summary is like this. Uh, let's suppose you have an Ilford and ND400, the 9 stop. Uh, and the subject in the water is quite close that uh, when you consider the depth, you need at least f22. And let's say the shutter speed for the aperture f22 is 1 15. You start at 15 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, what do you get? Yes, it's 30 seconds. And is it the end? Never. You have to consider the reciprocity failure. Now, what do you get? Yes, 2 minutes and 40 seconds is what you need for a good exposure at the situation. That's it today. And now I show you some pictures of mine. Uh, they are sets of two pictures. One is the iPhone shot including shooting information, and the other is the result. I'll come back soon with some more film photography contents. Thank you.